Hey folks, Ariel over here at Finance. I know it has been a very long time since a video has been out about anything going on here, but what I wanted to do is I really tried to make time to show you the garden before the garden is over um, for the year because my summer has been super busy and it has remained actually quite warm up through now, but in about two days we've got a forecast for a potential hard freeze and snow flurries. Um, this is the end of August heading into September and that is quite normal actually. But everything still for the most part looks really good right now. I don't know if you can see Burley on rodent patrol in front of the camera, but um, I wanted to show you it before everything was dead because the garden really has thrived this year. It is probably the best garden I have ever raised. If you've been following things here for a long time, the, um, the new raised beds with the concrete and the hardware cloth underneath have been a total success uh, so far for two years in keeping the small rodents out, my pocket gophers. They have tried in multiple places, like they've got a dirt pile here in the path right behind me where they tried to tunnel up to the, the blocks. They tried going under and so far none of them have succeeded in getting in. So that is wonderful. So anyway, start a garden tour. Um, start with what you can see. This is a horseradish patch, these big leaves that are getting kind of floppy. Uh, they're normally harvested in the fall um, for the root. If you want a good flavor, I hear the flavors better after some cold weather. I tend to get cold weather all the time, so I tend to just grab a chunk on the side of one of the plants and pull a root up whenever I need it. But that's horseradish. Right beside it here I've got a little patch of onions, and then most of the rest of these two beds is potatoes. I've got um, German butterball potatoes, blue potatoes, which are actually like a bright purple, but they're called blue, uh, red skinned, and Yukon gold. They are all starting to die back now. That is totally natural at this stage in their life cycle. Um, that's what they do. The plants start to die back, and once they're fully dead, I've, I've harvested a few already just to enjoy as new baby ones, but when the plants are fully dead, the potatoes will be ready to harvest and store for the winter. Um, right here, you can see the tops of a couple cauliflower I had planted. They got frost nipped really hard the day I got them this spring. I got the little starts from a greenhouse and it wasn't supposed to get that cold and we had a very hard freeze that night. So they've kind of struggled. Some you can see have gone to seed, so I just let them do that. Uh, the hummingbirds and bees and stuff love them. And I've got a couple here that are actually making little heads, so I might get to harvest some. And I don't know if you can see the remaining leaves right here, but this is the rhubarb patch. I did harvest quite a bit of rhubarb, and the leaves that are left here still look nice and green, but their stalks are pretty little and thin, and I've just left them to, to feed the whole root system through the year for um, so the plant has lots of energy for next year. So that's these two big long beds. Let's move over here. Oh, and by the way, if this is your first video here, um, and you haven't been following things for a while, these white cloths and these hoops, that is for the frost cover setup, which I will be using again here in a day or so. That's a very heavy frost cloth. It gives my garden about 10 degrees of protection. They're on a long roll. These are supports so I can roll them up over each bed every time it's gonna freeze. Um, they haven't been used for the last few weeks because it has actually been unusually warm. We've had days even up to 90 Fahrenheit, which is, we have entire summers where it never even gets to 80, so that has been warm. The first half of the summer before that was very cold and I used the frost covers every night and a lot of days um, for probably the first at least six weeks after I started planting because we had frost after freeze, after snow flurry, um, etc. So without those, I probably would not have any garden because, as I've mentioned before, what I am doing here is almost what most people would consider a winter garden. It, winter here is eight months long, and in between that, that's the time when the snow is solid on the ground. In between that, I don't have any guarantee of a frost-free growing time, so I tend to grow things that can handle some freezing, but they still thrive and grow faster if they don't freeze too hard, and some things will still die if they freeze too hard. So those are really essential for me in this very cold area to be able to get a harvest. So what I've got right here is little red onions. I planted these from seed myself, so I tend to harvest them quite small and just use them fresh for cooking. You can see there's some holes in there. I've used some. I'll continue to use more. This is kohlrabi, which um, grows well here, but is not my favorite veggie, and so I'm not sure if I'll plant it again. Um, uh, the, you grow it for the, the thick uh, stem part, um, but it makes lots and lots of leaves and they'll end up with the compost and that's fine. But there's just so many other things I enjoy eating more than that that I may not give any of my limited garden space to them next year. Uh, this again is the big horseradish leaves behind me. Over here I've got cabbages. 
which have done phenomenal this year. A few I've harvested, you can see these are empty, and the rest of these have these big fat balls. Um, they've been weighing in at six-ish plus pounds a piece which is a very good big cabbage head for my short growing season. So I've got two kinds of green cabbage here in a row. This, this head is just massive. That's, that's got to be eight or nine pounds at least. Um, that bed's cabbage and then some more onions at the other end, which are also doing great. Some are this big around. I cannot wait to harvest some of them. But I, I tend to let those mature more the whole way, so I have them for storage through the year. Those were started from seed as well, but in a greenhouse, not mine. I bought them from a greenhouse as little seedlings so that they would have time to get that big. Because if I start them from seed after the snow melts off the ground here, what I get is ones this size. So I do that for eating kind of fresh through the summer and keep the big fat guys for storage. Um, you know, for using up through the winter. As you come this way, I have got a whole bed of various kales here. This is red Ursula, blue Russian, purple Russian, I forget all the names, but I have four kale varieties and then about a dozen lettuce varieties, which I cut and harvest from all summer long. Some of them are starting to go to seed, but a lot of it is still good. This is the strawberry bed, which did give me a, a few nice bowls of lovely strawberries this spring. And then I've got two beds of green beans. Now, they're not all green, but they are grown for their, their fresh green beans. Some are yellow, some are green, some are purple, and some are red. And they have really just started good production. They're one of the things I grow that's the most borderline here in the garden because they do not handle being frozen, unlike almost everything else I grow. So I, I picked a very good bucket of beans yesterday off of them. They are blooming away. There's lots of little ones. I am hoping it doesn't get so cold that I lose them, um, though I, I always know that is a risk when I plant them here. That's, oh, he's such a pretty boy. Good boy. Let's go over there. Now from here you can kind of see my big fat onions and then this long bed has summer squashes and zucchinis down the center and beets on both edges. The beet leaves do not look great this year and I'm not entirely sure what happened to them. Um, it's not freezing because they can handle being freezing, frozen. I don't, uh, don't see a bug but they just don't look great. They've got something on them but they have been producing wonderful beets and I have various colors through here. I've got the pink candy striped, I've got gold beets, I've got a a red and a very dark red. They do generally do well in my climate and I love beets so I grow a lot of them. The summer squashes are another thing that is iffy that those um, the beans are my two iffy ones. Again I have just started getting actually a decent harvest of squashes. There are tons of blossoms, tons more little ones coming so hopefully we can keep them warm enough that uh, don't lose them all but if I do they just go in the compost and that's that. I get more beets. Um, so that's that whole bed. This is the bean bed behind me here. And coming this way, I have broccoli and more cabbage. Broccoli is not only one of my favorite veggies, I also really like the way it produces. So the reason I grow so little cauliflower, even though I like it almost as well as broccoli, but not quite, is when you cut a cauliflower head, I at least have never gotten side shoots to produce after that. That's kind of it for the year. However, when I cut broccoli, it first makes a, a big main head in the center, and that is the biggest one for the year. But when that is done and I cut that and eat it, it continues until it freezes very solid, and broccoli can take it pretty cold, um, to produce all these little side shoots. And they kind of get progressively smaller as the summer goes on, because I'll start getting side shoots this big, and then they get smaller, and eventually I start to get down to these you know, very small ones that are kind of like a single bite but I have harvested many, many pounds of broccoli over, off of here, and I'd say every five or six days I'm coming back and cutting, there's a whole bunch here that are about to need cut again, and I just cut it two days ago. I'm cutting another meal or two's worth um, off of the shoots every single, you know, week through, um, through a very hard freeze. They're, they're probably good down to when we get in the teens Fahrenheit. So that's why I grow a lot of broccoli, because it's just so productive for me here in my cold area. And then on this side, I've got um, purple cabbages. They've got some pretty good heads going on. They never get quite as big as the green cabbage in my experience, but they're beautiful. I like making that Danish Christmas cabbage recipe with them, and so I always grow some of them. The bed behind here, the one closest to the house, this beautiful ferny stuff is asparagus. 
Um, if you're used to what the little asparagus shoots look like in a grocery store, that's what these start out like. And I did get to harvest a good bit of asparagus this year. That was the first time because I started this from seed five years ago now. And asparagus takes a while to get established. That's why a lot of people don't start it from seed because they're impatient. Um, but the first year when it came up, the entire plant that came up was probably about as big as what you can see above my hand there. And that's all it did all year. And the next year it got a little bigger. And now we're up to this. I harvested a lot and it grew prolifically now, kind of like the rhubarb. This is now just feeding the root system for the next year. But even if you don't like asparagus, I don't know why more people don't grow this just ornamentally in flower beds. It's beautiful. I've always loved ferns and I just think it's gorgeous. But that's what it's doing. It will eventually die back and, and the roots will send up lots of yummy shoots next spring. And then here is my pea crop, which has done spectacular this year. It's the best peas I have ever raised since uh, helping my parents garden as a child. They don't look this tall right now, but these, uh, there is a trellis under here that you can't see. They grew up to the top of the trellis, then they grew up to about here, then they fell over in the wind. So right now these peas that you can't actually tell they come up over, they hit the ground on that side and then they've come back up. So if they were standing straight up, if I had put in a trellis tall enough for the way they actually grew, They'd be somewhere up here, and I have gotten a wonderful pea harvest off of these. These are all hull peas where the, the shell is pretty tough, and so I'm picking them to shell for the pea seeds. Over there, I do have a patch of sugar snaps because I also like some of them for eating fresh. And then kind of hiding under them because they got so big and tall and floppy is my carrot crop. And carrots are another thing, like the beets that seem to do really, really well here. I've, um, every year I plant lots of colors of carrots. If you didn't know, carrots don't only grow in orange. They also grow in pink and purple and yellow and uh, red, and I plant some of each. But they also seem to like partial shade, so having them kind of under the edges of the peas here, even though the peas have flopped on top of them in places, they don't seem to have minded at all, and I am getting a beautiful carrot harvest, and there's lots more here to harvest. I, I eat some fresh every few days. Uh, and then when I know the ground is going to be freezing solid for the year, I, I kind of try to get the rest of them out. But they go down both sides of that bed. And I got one last spot to show you. Right over here where barely is napping, I have some more little bunching onions. Again, these are some I started from seed and used fresh. And then this empty patch behind me was where all the garlic was. But my garlic is done for the year. It is all hanging to dry just like I did last year. I got a very good harvest again. But it came out a few weeks ago, and I knew there probably wasn't enough time for anything to actually grow before we have, you know, frozen solid ground and snow again. But I just threw in some radish seeds and some lettuce seeds anyway. Even if they don't mature enough for me to eat, um, they'll just make compost and there'll be something growing here. And I don't know if you can see these little seedlings, but they, they did come up and... We'll see what they, radish and lettuces are both somewhat cold hardy, so we'll see if they do or don't do anything in that space till winter um, actually shows up and, and gets very wintry. But that's what's in that hole in the garden. It was full of very big, beautiful garlics. And then you can kind of see over here behind me, this was the old garden area. Before I made these raised beds, this is the one you can see best because it's the most empty right now. Um, this was the area the whole garden was in. Since it was already clear of everything, when I moved the garden here two years ago, I was trying to decide what to do with that, just let it go wild, which the very back end I kind of did. Uh, but what I chose to do in this part of it was to plant a whole lot of herbs and different perennials, um, flowers and such, a lot of which I wanted to start from seed. So let me show you what I got going on over here. So over here, um, a lot of perennials, if you go to a nursery or whatever and buy them, they'll be in a big pot. They'll be, depending on your area, 8, 10, 12, 20 bucks a piece. And that is partly because they take a good bit of time to grow from a small seed. Uh, I, being a cheapskate, didn't want to do that. And a seed packet for sometimes several hundred seeds usually only costs a couple dollars. So I thought, I'm going to just use this as my little nursery to grow some things from seed. So some of these things don't look spectacular yet. It looks a little weedy because a lot of these things are small, but I've got a variety of, these were actually some extra onions a friend gave me. This is plantain, which I didn't even buy the seeds for. I had a, it didn't seem to grow right here, but I had a friend who had a bunch growing in their yard, so I grabbed some from them. So now I have lots of them that are mature, plus lots of little ones coming up. That's really great for making salves and such for your skin. I've got some more hyssop coming up there. 
all along the front edge and the side edge, I've used my extra strawberry runners from my official strawberry bed and just kind of tucked them in all along the edge. So eventually that will all fill in and it will be a, a strawberry edging. The pansies came back from seeds. They volunteered all on their own. A few of these things are more ornamental or just for my pollinators benefit, uh, but most of them are medicinal or edible. So there's some blanket flower, there's iris, there's some radishes I let go to seed because all the pollinator stuff loves radish flowers. Um, got silver artemisia, I've got dill, got several varieties of hyssop, I've got chamomile, uh, valerium, some purple, uh, purple leafed dandelions, some pink buckwheat, some uh, sugar snap peas, and in between randomly you see a few sunflowers. Those were all volunteers that the chipmunks planted when they cleaned up spilled bird seed and didn't get back to and they, they grow. And a few of them are blooming and so on. So that's what this bed is and it's kind of a nursery because I know I won't be in this spot forever so some of these things will get mature enough that I can hopefully dig them up and take them with me and at that point they will be a 10 to 20 dollar plant and it won't have cost me anywhere close to that to produce it and I'll have a an actually mature productive plant to take to a new home with me. Let's look real quick at what's going on around the house. So around here, as you know, I probably um, probably know if you've been following me for any length of time, I grow a lot more food around the kind of patio area here. I have four varieties of mint, which I have harvested regularly and made tea every couple days, like a fresh cold brewed mint tea all summer. It's very refreshing when it's hot. And in between, I tucked a few of these red Ursula kale primarily because they get just really pretty as things freeze in the fall. Their colors get even more intense, and so they're kind of there just to be ornamental for the fall. I could eat them, but I have plenty over there to eat, so these are here just to look pretty. And then around the house, I have kind of the same combo of herbs and flowers. In these old planters, which are starting to really come apart, um, they are the old lockers that I've used for six years now. They were thrown out from a local gym, and I turned them on the back took the, the, the doors off, filled them with dirt, and they have been growing herbs and flowers for me ever since. So if you want to know what all is in here exactly, I know I have a video covering what I plant. It's pretty much the same thing every year because I have uh, my favorite colors and then there's only particular things that will do well in my cold climate. But that stuff is growing all around the house and being used and I love it. Then I also have the Woods Edge, which has also become a flower bed slash food source. So let's check that out. Over time over here, I've just kind of filled in the edges. If you know anything about permaculture, um, edges tend to be the most productive place, but I've kind of filled in the edges between the part that I mow and consider my yard so I can walk around without getting dirty and soaked and the, the wild woods with various um, plants. Some of these are ornamental things that I got for free from somebody I was helping garden and they had spares and they wanted them divided. This is a hummingbird feeder back here. I don't know where they are right now. Usually they're buzzing my head. Um, but I've got various hyssops, which are in the mint family, and I love the kind of have a licorice -y taste, which I particularly love because I like licorice. And pansies and strawberry spinach seems to have reseeded itself all over the place now. Um, this edge has, these are some lilacs I planted. Years ago, they were little orphaned uh, baby plants about this tall. It didn't look like they were gonna make it. And this guy is now very big and beautiful. He's, of course, done blooming for the year. But all along here, I have more mints as a ground cover under my raspberries. Uh, it works out well. I hardly ever touch weeding or anything here. And then I've got hollyhocks and more strawberry spinach and pansies and a hops vine growing up and over the garden tool shed and bee balm and, and lemon balm and tansy and so on. So that's just kind of, and that goes most of the way around the whole clearing. That's kind of what I have going on there. So that is a look at the garden. I don't know how much longer it will last. People have asked me what, uh, you know, what is my, my expected time to continue gardening. I know the ground is not going to freeze permanently solid in a few days, but we could definitely get a hard freeze, maybe into the mid 20s Fahrenheit. Um, I, a lot of things in the garden, like all the leafy stuff and root stuff will still be fine for a while until we start getting freezes that freeze the ground up solid. I might lose squash and, and beans. Um, but for the most part, everything is looking good. Oh, and I wanted to mention this year, I thought it'd be fun just uh, for my info and whatever, the actual garden bed space over here in the official garden is uh, just over 600 square feet total. 
and I thought it'd be fun to record how much food that actually produces for me. So every time I've been harvesting peas or picking lettuce or whatever I'm doing, I've been weighing it. And so far for the year, I am approaching 80 pounds of produce that I have, you know, eaten or had dinners with friends or whatever out of the garden. And I haven't got to picking most of the heavy stuff yet because I've only harvested a few carrots, a few beets, hardly any of the potatoes, not most of the cabbage heads. All of that stuff weighs a lot. Um, compared to, say, picking peas and lettuce leaves, which don't weigh nearly as much. So I'm curious to see what my total is I'm going to end up with by the end of the year, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite a few hundred pounds of produce out of my 600 square feet. And I am not weighing any of the herbs and mints and, and stuff over here, so I'm wearing my medicinal and herbal, you know, wild bed in the old garden area. And I'm not counting any of that uh, in either the square footage or the amount of stuff, though I do eat stuff out of here. It'd just be a pain to try to weigh little sprigs of herbs every time I grab one. Um, so I'm not even counting any of that. So uh, stick around, come follow me on MeWe. Eventually you'll uh, you'll get uh, whatever total I get for the year once everything freezes up and I know it's done and I uh, can see what I got. But uh, overall, I'm super thankful that everything has done well. I don't know what all to credit that to, um, whether it's, it's definitely a big part of it is that the gophers did not eat half of the things. Um, that helped <laughs> a lot. Um, I don't know if it's just the years of adding compost and such into my soil. Uh, I did do a soil test last fall that I talked about and, you know, added a few soil amendments based on its recommendation. It was mostly just like a teaspoon or two of a few things to the whole garden. I don't know if that helped. I would say it could be the weather, but this summer was kind of rough for the things I grow because it was so cold for so long at the first half of the summer and then it got so hot and that can be kind of stressful on a plant when it's a plant that likes cooler weather and we've had big temperature swings where it was 29 you know at night and then it was 91 the next day and then back in the 20s at night again that's and that kind of thing does happen here and that that stuff is those kind of swings are hard on plants so I'm not sure what all exactly worked together, but I am thankful that my garden has given me many wonderful meals and continues to give me many more. And I did want to capture that on camera and be able to share it with you folks before it all freezes and is dead. So I hope you're enjoying your summers and uh, your, your gardens are doing wonderful. And if you've never gardened, I highly encourage you to start there in most areas that are less cold than mine. Uh, this is an excellent time to be planting things for a fall garden or even winter garden if you have a climate that does allow those kinds of things. And I wish you all success with everything you want to learn and grow. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.